Hi everyone, Whitney Lowe here with today's Clinical Insights video where we're going to be focusing in on two of the key proprioceptors in the body. What they are, what they do, and how they play a part in some of the different treatment strategies that we might try to employ. So the first one we're going to focus on is the Golgi tendon organ. The Golgi tendon organ, or GTO, is located near the musculotendinous junction. Its primary function is to determine the level of contraction force on a muscle. It plays a primary role in maintaining and regulating that muscle contraction force so that you can use the degree of muscle tension that's appropriate for the activity that you're trying to accomplish. This is primarily a protective mechanism to keep the muscle from over-contracting and causing damage or putting too much load on that muscle. So one of the things that we know is that Golgi tendon organs are primarily sensitive to intra muscular tension. So there has to be some degree of tension within the nervous system stimulus to contract that muscle for those Golgi tendon organs to be active. So they're most active when the muscle is contracting on a very strong and high load. And what they're doing is protecting that muscle so that if that load continues to be too high, it may actually diminish or decrease the level of contraction in that muscle to a safe, appropriate level. An important clarification about the role of the Golgi tendon organ is that it doesn't completely shut off a muscle contraction. Basically, it just turns down the level of contraction force that that muscle is engaged in to a more safer and appropriate level. Now, one of the things I wanted to address in terms of why this is relevant for massage and manual therapy is there are some type of treatment techniques advocated to try to get muscles to relax by stimulating the Golgi tendon response. Remember, the Golgi tendon decreases the degree of muscle tightness as a result of over-contraction. So I've seen people advocate doing things like taking two ends of a muscle and trying to pull them together with your fingers with the idea that that's going to stimulate the Golgi tendon response in there, saying that the Golgi tendon will determine there's too much load on that muscle tendon unit right where that pulling force is being concentrated between the muscle and tendon, and that will initiate the Golgi tendon response to decrease muscle tightness. So it's used as kind of a treatment strategy to try to get a muscle to relax. The problem is that doesn't really work that way for a couple of reasons. Number one, we do know that Golgi tendon organs are most active or predominantly always active when there is an active muscle contraction occurring. So simply trying to manually grab a muscle and pull its two ends closer together is not going to stimulate the Golgi tendon organ response. The other thing is we don't really shorten a muscle when we try to grab its two ends and sort of slide them together. Basically what you're doing is just sliding the skin over the underlying muscle because that muscle won't actually shorten or change its length unless there's movement of the bones that that muscle is attached to. So without that appropriate movement in there, you're not even going to get any kind of muscle shortening to begin with. But the most important factor is there, that's not really occurring in terms of the Golgi tendon response because we have to have active, a very strong, in fact, active muscular contraction to make that work. Now the next proprioceptor we'll look at is the muscle spindle cell. The muscle spindle cell is located throughout the entire muscle, not unlike the Golgi tendon organ, which is just at the musculotendinous junction. The muscle spindle cells are distributed throughout the muscle, and their main function is to determine if there's an appropriate level or possibly dysfunctional level of stretch on that muscle. So it's trying, trying to protect the muscle against overstretching. The muscle spindle cells are sensitive to two different types of information coming from the spindle cells. One is the rate of contraction. So how fast is a muscle lengthening? Because if a muscle is lengthening really fast, then the body is going to determine if it keeps going in that direction, this could be dangerous and cause damage to the muscle. The other thing is how much of a stretch is on that tissue. So if there's an excessive amount of stretch on the tissue, the muscle spindle cells are going to fire more excessively. So the muscle spindle cells are responsive to the rate of stretch of a muscle, also the degree of stretch. Now, if you're performing stretching techniques during a manual therapy application, you want to usually avoid initiating that stretch reflex. So one of the things that you want to make sure you don't do is stretch somebody too fast, and it's going to be pretty hard to set off that myotatic or stretch reflex, causing that muscle to contract even further. You'd have to stretch somebody super fast, and we just generally don't do that with manual therapy. The other thing that you'd want to be cautious about is that you don't stretch somebody too far. If you keep pushing and keep pushing a stretch too far, that could set off the stretch reflex. It doesn't have to do with the amount of time that the stretch is held, however. There's a common misconception in some stretching 
theories and methodologies that you shouldn't hold a stretch for longer than a certain period of time because that will initiate the stretch reflex. That's not really going to happen because the stretch reflex is responsive to how fast is the length change or how much is that length change, not how long is it held. So as long as you're holding a stretch short of a point where the body perceives some type of threat or potential danger, then you're going to be fine. That's not going to set off that stretch reflex even further. One of the other ways that some people talk about using the muscle spindle cells is because of another um, sort of neurological reporting process involving what's called the gamma efferent system. So this is a way that the muscle spindle cells are made more sensitive to that level of change in stretch, and it might cause an increased degree of muscle contraction. Now, sometimes this is advocated to be used when people speak about a muscle being weak or inhibited. And then there's a discussion of attempting to sort of increase that muscle's activity. Some people will call it turning a muscle on, which is that, I don't know, the phrase is really not quite accurate, but there is this idea that we can increase the level of muscle contraction activity by doing something to stimulate the muscle spindles and the gamma efferent system to get more contraction in the muscles. Again, this idea is an interesting theoretical model it's just not really well supported in a lot of the research about the physiology of these um, proprioceptors because we know the gamma efferent system is going to be way more responsive to what's happening internally in the nervous system as a stimulus to engage its contraction than it is to an external manual force like pushing down on the muscle or pressing it or doing something to try to stimulate that gamma efferent activity. Now, there are some other methods like electrical stimulation of muscles. Those are some of the other things that could increase a muscle contraction level, and that might be able to do some of those things. But it's just not so likely that we're going to be able to accomplish that with manual therapy. So this is a quick overview on those two key proprioceptors, the Golgi tendon organ, or GTO, and the muscle spindles, their role and how they might play a part in what we're doing with our manual therapy applications. If you'd like to learn some more things about how these kinesiological principles play a role in manual therapy and helping our clients with pain management, come join us in some of our orthopedic massage courses over at the Academy of Clinical Massage. And you can find that on our website at academyofclinicalmassage.com. Love to work with you over there, and we'll see you in the next video.